guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm super excited today. We have the unique opportunity to talk with Al Oppenheiser. Al is chief engineer for the Hummer EV. He started his career at GM in 1985, and prior to the Hummer EV, he was chief engineer for Camaro for more than a decade. It was under his leadership that the Camaro resurged to take the 2016 Motor Trend Car of the Year award not to mention the ZL1 and its sub 12 second quarter mile. When GM came to him with the opportunity to lead the creation of the Hummer EV, he took the challenge and dove in to the world of electric vehicles. Corey and I had the great opportunity to see the Hummer in person last year at GM and we spoke with Al and his team. We're excited to get this behind the scenes update. If you guys haven't been here before, my name is Michael. I founded Overland Bound a few years ago, we believe that adventure is absolutely necessary. Today we're talking about the future of adventure travel. So let's catch up with Al right now. He's at the Milford Proving Ground, taking some time out of their testing schedule to answer some questions from the community. Al, it's a, it's a pleasure. Uh, it's a pleasure to have this uh, opportunity to, to interview you because I'm a car enthusiast. My first car was a Chevy. Restored a 68 Chevy Camaro myself. Today we're talking about the Hummer EV. Well, you just went up a little bit of value in my world here, Mike, uh, with, that, <laughs> with that comment. I didn't realize that, that's awesome. We can talk about that another time, but um, <laughs> today we're excited because we're here at our Milford Proving Grounds in Michigan, and I'm sitting in a test vehicle, a test Hummer EV. The last time we were together, we were at the Design Dome with you and Corey looking at the show truck. You were some of the first people that are non-GM to see the Hummer. And even though you got into that one, this is real. This is the real truck. This is out doing testing. And we've got a lot of things to talk about with you today. We're moving so fast. Basically, our team did the vehicle the way it is. So to present it to people like you and Corey and have your opinion be, as you mentioned, very positive. We didn't really know. I mean, maybe we were going down the wrong path, but based off of the excitement and the great conversation we had with both of you after the Dome event, we kind of felt like we were on the right path. We really want this to be a no excuses, not a poser. It's a real off-road vehicle. And of course, the styling is, uh, is over the top. It sounds like there's real tenacity in that team and it showed in Detroit with the vehicle that we saw. Today I'm hoping we can dive into a little bit more detail and talk about some of the things that you guys have done to um, make this a true off-road capable vehicle. People have concerns that immediately come up when you talk about an electric vehicle off-road. Range, reliability, things of that nature. To cue things up, is there anything for those preconceived notions that you might want to speak to about your awareness of those things and what it might mean for the Hummer EV? Absolutely. So I'll tailor the first response right to your audience because I know they want to understand what does it mean if I go off-roading, rock crawling, overlanding experiences, trail riding. So I'll give you a, um, a scenario here. So with an EV, there's a lot of range anxiety. With an EV that's the size of the Hummer, of course that would be magnified. And then I'm going off-road, there's no charging stations in the middle of Moab and a lot of people have no idea of what an electric vehicle is and can I plug my phone in, will it drain my range? So let's say that you wanna uh, go camping at a spot that's 100 miles from home and you wanna stay for 10 days, right? So you load the family up, you load your gear up, you get a full charge on your Hummer from home, you're ready to go, you drive your 100 miles, you go to your trailhead, you go find your camping location, you can use your coffee maker every morning for your morning coffee the whole trip you can leave your cooler plugged in the whole time you can plug your electric griddle in and cook three squares a day uh, you can leave your lights on you can watch your tv you can crank your music and then you got enough range to get back home uh, that hundred mile trip back home and you haven't done anything other than leave with a full charge when you leave your home if you wanted to go more extreme uh, we have Google Automotive Services navigation system on the Hummer EV. Using our Energy Assist app, you can plot out your trip. So let's say it's twice as far or, or you know, three times as far from home to get there um, and you want to stay longer and you want to uh, go further up on daily excursions and then you want to end up back home. If you plug that in through our Energy Assist app, 
it will tell you, hey, I got you covered. You're gonna have to stop at a certain location where there's a DC fast charger and we can top you off before you go hit the trailhead. Then you can do your excursion, come back home, and we may tell you to stop on your way home and, and charge a little bit to get there. Our energy assist app will, will guide you on your whole tour and tell you if on that tour you need the DC fast charge. It will actually work and see if you want to set up an appointment, reserve a spot for you. So we've got you covered on all fronts if you want to take your Hummer EV off-roading. Much of that I hadn't heard before. I think you are speaking directly to a big percentage of, of our audience. You brought up a key point about electric draw. When you're talking about charging your iPhone or running a blender versus powering the Hummer EV, we're talking about two different worlds, right? So you're not gonna drain your primary motor battery by plugging in your iPhone. Exactly. But I should also say that in the Hummer EV, we've got regen braking which takes that energy from your braking and helps feed back charge into your battery. So there's opportunities to increase the efficiency of your trip. Let me ask you, we're talking about these trips close to home or even extended. How does the weight or the equipment that people might want to bring with them, whether it be in the vehicle or out of the vehicle, what are some of the considerations for adding accessories and equipment and how might that affect the range of the Hummer EV? Basically, uh, about 100 pounds of cargo um, will eat about uh, a little over a mile of range. So it's really not that big of an impact. So if you load up your cargo um, under the tonneau cover in the bed um, or in the hoodie, which is the front storage system or inside the vehicle, there's kind of a guide for you. So you can see it's not really an impact. However, if your accessories include like a light bar, or some of the roof accessories we'll offer. Well, you're now affecting your cross-sectional area and your drag or your aero. Um, and that does have a little bit more of an impact. The vehicle is more aero sensitive than it is mass sensitive. Along the same lines, how does terrain affect the Hummer EV? Terrain like sand, deep sand, that's obviously gonna put more load on the driveline system versus rock crawling. It kind of depends on the scenario, what's the ambient temperature, what type of driving style you have, what mode you're in, but I still think we're, we're, we're talking a normal expectation of range usage. It's not a, more of a drain than it would be, you know, if you're using gas as well. I hope that answers right. the question. Yeah, I think it really did. And uh, uh, you offered that, you know, at least preliminarily that you're seeing what might be expected, which is you're gonna get more draw if you've got your foot into it in sand as opposed to crawling over, over rocks. So you just mentioned you've got a hundred trucks out there in the wild going through various scenarios. How are you guys testing the off-road durability of the, of the Hummer EV? We're testing any way you can. Um, we've got vehicles that are testing in some of our lab environments. Uh, we call it an 18 channel rig. Uh, what it does is it takes data from the road systems and it basically will set it up on this multi-post simulator and it will run the structural durability for you know, up to a million miles, runs 24 hours a day. So we've got trucks doing that. That takes us way out into the 100, 200, half a million mile range to see what happens to the structure. We're also running schedules uh, in that durability that match some of the off-road routes as well. Uh, besides that, we've got vehicles up north doing winter testing right now. We've got vehicles out west on Sorrel Trail. We're going to Moab soon. We've got a lot of vehicles running around town that are starting to get photographed on social media that are running regular roads, highways, rural routes. And of course, we've got a lot of vehicles running here at our Milford Proving Grounds in Michigan. So it's just basically run them as long, as fast as you can. We've got 24-hour schedules. They never sit. When one team finishes, they will give it a charge and hand it over to the next person. Given the accelerated schedule we have, we don't have time to sit. So it's, it's amazing how much testing is going on as we speak. You'll start to see them everywhere, and it's kind of neat that people are identifying them, taking pictures. I guess they're exciting a lot of people out on public roads. Yeah, I can tell you, you're exciting a lot of folks in our, in our community as well. It'll be great to start to see them. So my understanding is the, the, the first version of the Hummer EV is it has a three motor configuration. Can you tell us a bit about that? Exactly, so the first one we're calling Edition 1. The way we code our, our um, electric vehicles is a coding system that gives you 
the motor number and then how many modules the battery is. So for instance, the vehicle I'm sitting in right now, which is our year one edition one, uh, it's called a 3M24. So it's a three motor, 24 module pack battery. So this vehicle has uh, three basically identical motors. The two in the rear are opposing each other. Um, and then there's a third one in the front. They help generate 1,000 horsepower. And then of course that monster number of the 11,500 pound feet of torque. A couple things about the, the motor is that um, the two rear motors that are opposed, they're, the, all the motors are inboard, they're not at the wheel but the rear motors are have no mechanical link to each other, so they're true independent. Uh, they control each motor, allows us to do torque vectoring so that we can do things like yaw control one side versus the other. It's huge for a truck like this to be able to control individual wheel yaw control, um, individual torque vectoring, in fact, at all four wheels. You know, and that whole scheme of why would somebody consider an electric vehicle we can multiply the motors and increase the horsepower and the torque capability um in a real world scenario i rely on my my lockers all the time and i know it's not a one-to-one -one comparison between my drivetrain and the hummer ev drivetrain maybe you can talk to it from that perspective if i'm looking for locker type capability what does that mean with the hummer ev good question so the the front motor has a, a true uh, is a true locker. The rear is a uh, an e locker. It's an electronic locking diff. We call it an e four wheel drive because it, there are no mechanical links uh, side to side on the rear motor. There's also no mechanical links from the front to the rear. That allows us to split out the gear ratios front to rear. So we have a different gear ratio in the front drive unit versus the rear drive unit. So the front has a 13.3 to one and the rear is a 10.5 to one ratio. But that allows us to control the power that we need front and rear. When you can do that, uh, we can use the, the power that the three motors provides to give us the performance numbers that we have. In fact, we had to back the torque off the front drive units to keep the tires on the ground. Otherwise it becomes a big drag car. The capabilities of using three electric motors that we can torque vector off of, true standard locker in the front and e-locker in the rear is a real enabler for us, um, some of our performance capabilities. You know, I started to visualize how I would be driving a Hummer EV as I have many times in the past two months. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm picturing myself on the trail putting some of those uh, traction uh, control um, features to work. The physical aspect of being on the trail and protecting the Hummer EV. The um, Edition 1 is our off-road uh, high performance variant. It does come with standard rock sliders. The rock sliders are capable of uh, basically protecting the truck for half of its mass per side, so you've got plenty of uh, security behind you that you're gonna be good. The uh, other protection we have, we got a complete set of underbody skid plates. I should also mention that we got the, uh, a feature, as you know, uh, crab walk mode. Because we've got rear steer, we can have the wheels turn in the same direction with the rear wheels turning up to 10 degrees. So sometimes when you're navigating a rock trail, it could be really narrow. Um, rock sliders are definitely the key to make a successful run through the, the, your route. But uh, sometimes there are those obstacles that you are a little worried about to your right or left rear quarter because you're not gonna be able to make the turn. With crab walk mode, you can follow the, the path with your tires, but the body literally stays pointed forward in the direction you're traveling. The rear steer also will allow the rear wheels to oppose each other. Uh, so you've got the turning radius of a small sedan. We've had a lot of people already experiencing some of our test trucks within the company, some of our leaders, and they just, they can't believe the turning radius of this thing, which is also an enabler um, ultimately that could help protect from vehicle damage on a trail. Absolutely, and it will, in some ways uh, dictate what trails you can take the vehicle on, right? Because you have that turning ra radius and that capability. Another thing, I know when I'm out on the trail in my current vehicle, this is a, a difference as well. I'm driving around my pumpkin, right? I always have that in mind. 
but the undercarriage of the Hummer EV is different than a traditional vehicle. Absolutely. I mentioned we've got the five protective covers underneath. There's the skid plates. There's a battery protection plate. Also in the suspension, we have a, a, a little extra for our, our customers called extract mode, which uh, if you're out on a rock crawl and you approach an obstacle, and you think you're going to clear it and as you get closer you realize you just aren't going to clear it and you really wish you had more vertical travel we bantered around what we call this thing because it's really a lifesaver this gets you a chance to get a little bit more vertical travel it's speed related so that it gets you over that obstacle and as you pick up your speed again it will settle back down to the mode you're in Compared to a, a, a regular off-road vehicle uh, with a regular drive line, we don't have the pig to worry about. We don't have the prop shaft to worry about. It's a flat underbody, uh, which also allowed us to add underbody cameras with a wash system, I should add. Uh, it literally allows you to plant the front tires and the rear tires wherever you want them because you can see them on your center screen. Oh, that's great. We have a saying, when in doubt, get out. And of course, you should always do that. But here, at least you'll have a, a view to the ground and you'll be able to see where your tires are. What other advantages might we not be thinking about? Because we're just now learning about the Hummer EV. What other advantages might you want to mention? All four of these infinity roofs come out and the rear drop glass will drop as well, which gives you a complete open air environment. Um, I think our customers will love the fact that if you're rock crawling, you're out enjoying nature. There's kind of a cool factor where you've got no engine noise or you hear your tires scrubbing and chirping. You know, it's just the sounds that you're able to enjoy um, are there for you because it's an EV. One of the reasons we're encouraging uh, people to go and find that connection with, with nature is because of its benefits and we feel more people should do it. So those, um, those features that you bring up, I think will, you know, I, I can only imagine because I always hear the roar of the engine and that has its own, its own charm, but being able to feel even closer to nature as you're traveling is gonna be, that'll be a great experience. I, I totally agree with you. It's a real important thing. Um, the whole movement to EV, um, one of the offshoots is enjoying the world. Al, one other, one, one question I had, I'm, I'm thinking about folks that are out there, I wanna ask an obvious one, which is, um, hey, I'm splashing through water, this is an electric vehicle. What's my fording depth? What, what's the reality around water, going through water? Not to worry, um, our battery systems are completely sealed. All electrical connections are weather tight connectors. In extract mode, you can water for up to 32 inches. It's been a, a blast seeing the vehicle on YouTube and as we learn more, but I think people will gain a new appreciation for it, really be excited when they have the opportunity to see it in person. It's an incredible vehicle. It's really fun to see. Al, I've been excited to, to talk to you. My first car wears the Body by Fisher nameplate, and so it, it's been fun to talk to you. I really appreciate you diving into some more details on the Hummer EV. No problem, love talking about it, and I love the fact we get to share it with you guys. Like I said, it was really exciting to meet you at the Dome. Next time you can sit in the passenger seat with me, or even the driver's seat, and I'll sit in the passenger seat. How about that? I prefer that. Okay, no problem. I'm, I'm getting enough well, drive time, and we'll give you a chance. That'd be incredible. Well, thank you very much, Al. Really appreciate it. Thank you. It's been great. All right, you guys, there you go. Our first behind the scenes look with the Hummer EV. We are gonna be doing a lot more with Al and the Hummer EV team. So if you haven't, make sure you like and subscribe so you get to see those first look videos. Also, if you're not on an adventure, but planning one, go and check out some of the other videos we have on the channel. All right, till next time, outfit and explore.